There's a new way that state pensions, war pensions and benefits are going to be paid. It's called direct payment. Your money will be paid straight into your account and you'll be able to get your money out in lots more places, including the post office. In a nutshell, that's it. But for more information, call 0800 107 2000. Direct payment, giving it to you straight. This is Big Brother's Little Brother with all the latest news from the house. Quick, they're all in the pool. We reveal the nominations exclusively every Tuesday night. I can confirm they are all still sleeping. Bringing you all the drama as it unfolds. She's having two sugars in her coffee, I repeat, two sugars. BBLB tonight at six on Channel 4 and repeated nightly on E4. Somebody is stuck in the diary room. This is Dermot O'Leary for BBLB, outside the place the nation is talking about. It's a Wednesday here on Full Daytime and 15 to 1 is only half an hour away and that's right after Pet Rescue. Today on Pet Rescue, there are some casualties who need emergency care. Two bats, a little mouse and a cat with suspected burn injuries. And Jenna and Elsie have both lost a close companion. Now perhaps they can find comfort together. Hello, today I'm back with the Greater Manchester Police Force to meet some more of the 160 dogs who work here. Now, earlier on in the series, we saw how some of these dogs were trained and it was obvious then it takes a really special kind of animal to cope with all the rigours of this job. An animal like Murphy here. Hello, Murphy. Aren't you lovely? And your handler is called Paul. Now, Paul, tell me about Murphy. Right, well, Murphy um, is three years of age. He joined the police when he was about 14 months old. He uh, was rescued by a pub landlady who then later uh, donated him to the police service. And he's not a German Shepherd like most of the others are? That's correct. He's uh, a German Shepherd stroke uh, Rottweiler cross. Oh, is that a good um, combination? Well, absolutely. <laughs> he's, uh, it works for him? Superb temperament, yes. OK, now I know he's really top-notch at what he does, so we're going to see some of that now. Sure. Jim, you're the instructor. Yes. Uh, do you want to just uh, take it away for us? Come on, Paul. OK, come on. Right, you just tell me what we're seeing now, why it's so important. The, the basics of all police dog training is control. And now, how, how does it differ from what you might do with you, your average pet dog at home? Or are the basics much the same? The basics are exactly the same. If you look at this dog looking at his handler here, he's besotted by Paul. He never takes his eyes off him. No, no. Does he? He'll do exactly what he says. Yeah. And it's important that the basics of control are in every police dog. OK. Right, Paul. Set him up for a little bit of distance control further down there. Okay. Cool. Now, the essence of this is if your dog is searching away from you for a missing from home, for um, a burglar or, or some other thief, things may go wrong. A child may run across, a member of the public may come into view, and it's important that the dog is controllable at a distance. Now, what Paul is going to do, do here is show you the basics of this control and how it's started off. Presumably, he'd stay there for it, minutes in, on end? Indefinitely. Really? Wow! And when the command, the, the Paul commands his dog to come to him, the dog will come to him. Come! Wow, that's absolutely fantastic. Sit. It's a lesson to us all. My parents, tell you what, I've you. got a couple of dogs, and they Sit. would never make it to be in the police force. <laughs> well, training dogs is the easy part. Training the animals is the hard part. Absolutely. <laughs> now, listen, later on, we're going to see some of these dogs do an agility course, so that is going to be fun. In Leeds, collection officer Kira Driscoll is on an emergency call-out. She's arrived to pick up a stray cat, reported to be in a very bad way, with suspected burn injuries. It was found by Adama Whittle. Yeah, I understand you've got a cat that you're concerned yeah, about. Yeah. Let's have a look. Oh dear. 
And then you found it on the doorstep this yeah, morning? Yeah, she was just sitting there. Just sit was she laid out or just sitting? She was just sort of like wobbling from side to side. Was and, she? Oh um, dear. Do you want to just weak. bob her down on the yeah. floor and then yeah. I can examine her on the floor? Okay. Let's have a look at you, sweetheart. Oh, I know. Mm, you smell quite bad, like you've been singed. Mm, I can see on the back there, it's a bit... All the fur's a bit yeah. singed, isn't it? Yeah. Dear me. You definitely smell like you've been in something, don't you, sweetheart? We'll get her down to the vets now, all yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, get her checked over. I don't like her breathing at all. And you can definitely smell yeah. like she's been burnt or singed yeah. by something. All right, thanks very much for your help. Thank you. Thanks, bye. The cat needs medical attention. Kira heads off to take him straight to the nearest vet. Meanwhile, elsewhere in Leeds, Inspector Lindsay Thompson is on an emergency call to see about another injured animal that was also found on someone's doorstep. I've had a call um, about a collection of a mouse that um, a lady's found on her doorstep wandering around in circles. Um, she thinks one of her cats had it, so I'm going to go in and just have a look at it. Hello, hi, hi. Inspector Thompson, RSPCA. I've come to collect a mouse. Yes, yeah. You want to just come on in? Yeah, thanks. How did you find it? Just on the front um, porch, just going round in a little circles. I think it's hurt the right leg. Right, have you got cats? Yeah. So, so it could have been one of the cats that attacked them. Right, okay. Yeah, it's not very um it's not very lively at all. But it usually when the a cat's had older them they're quite um stressed out. You can see with the breathing it's very fast and erratic, but it seems quite calm, so what I'll do is I'll take it away and have a look at it and see if there's anything we can do. My feelings are that it's probably um maybe got a bit of concussion or it's maybe, you know, in shock. Usually there's very little we can do for, for small wild mammals really, but we'll, we'll give it a go. While Lindsay sets off to take the mouse into the Leeds Animal Home, Kira Driscoll has arrived at a local clinic with the stray cat suffering from suspected burns. Let's take her out and let's have a closer look at okay. it. The vet on duty is James Storar. Oh dear. Uh, just really, really weak here. Mm. Really thin as well. Yeah. She can hardly support her body weight. Um, and quite dehydrated. Looks like might have been without food for a fair, a fair while. Those eyes are really looking really sunken as well. Yeah, I noticed that when I picked her up. And looks to be a bit of difficulty with the breathing here. Sounds very snuffly. It could be a bit of a nasal discharge as well. This fur looks like it could could have been singed as well. It's a yeah. It was, that's what she was worried about when she first sort of found it. Mm. That you know, obviously she could. I couldn't smell it when I got there. You know, it was quite prominent. It does. It's a bit smelly, nasty, isn't it? Yeah. In fact, thing. the burn injuries are only superficial. It's the cat's general condition that's far more serious. He's very poorly. He's very weak, and they're not optimistic. We we'll give him sort of next few hours, maybe over twenty. Yeah, I think we'll take hours. him in. We'll put him on a drip straight away, mm -hmm. um, and get him warmed up, and yeah. uh, and and see how he goes. Take it from there. Yeah. yeah. If he if he's if he's not responding, I don't think it'll be fair on him if we if we take it any longer. Further. I think okay. it might be kindest to to call it a day for him. Right. Okay. So the stray cat goes to a quiet pen. He was put on a drip, but overnight he continued to fade. The next day, James had no choice but to put him to sleep. Where he'd come from and what had happened to him just never came to light. There was similar bad news from the animal centre. The wild mouse that Lindsay took in didn't survive long either. But now Kira and Lindsay both have more calls to answer. Hopefully those will have happier outcomes. We'll catch up with them later to find out. Police dogs can lead a kind of Jekyll and Hyde existence. On the one hand, they're loving family pets, and on the other, they have to work and perform in some really quite dangerous and demanding situations. Well, all that, of course, takes specialist training, and now we're going to do some agility work. Now, a lot of dogs do do agility work, but with police dogs, it's different. Our police dog today is Jake, and this is Mike. Mike, tell me about Jake, because I know we have met him on Pet Rescue before. Jake's nearly two years old. I've had him since he was seven weeks old. He's part of GMP's puppy programme. 
Uh, he's on his course at the moment uh, with a view of being licensed in the next few weeks. Excellent. All right then. Well, I'll let you get on with this course. We've got various bits and bobs here. And Jim, you come with me and tell me what's happening. Start off by telling me, Jim, what the difference is between the normal agility course that we all think of and how you do it with the police dogs. Police dogs Stay. have got to do agility in a oh. controlled manner. Oh. He's got to negotiate obstacles. Stay. Just as he's done there, wait for the handler to join him. Stay so that he doesn't rush off at the other side of any garden fence or any other obstacle he has to negotiate. So, so all this has to have a really practical that's use what it's in all the about. end, doesn't yes, it? Yes, this is what it's about. Now this one here is six foot. Stay. The dog's got to negotiate and wait Stay. for his handler at the other side. Oh. Down! Ooh. And how do you think Stay. that he's doing, this dog, on this course? What do you think? He's doing OK. Yeah? Stay. He's bred to be a police dog. He's going to be a police dog. And he's OK. He's now, young, he's you, impetuous, but he's doing OK. Yeah. But of course, unlike a Border Collie racing against the clock, as you would perhaps normally see on these courses, this is quite different, isn't Control it? Control is the essence in a police dog. What are we going to see now? This, this particular obstacle here is, is an eight-foot jump. It could be a stream, Stay. it could be a brook, it could be anything. Ditch or... Ditch, anything like that. Stay. OK. Ditch. Up! Down! Wow. Down! He did that really well, didn't he? Oh, yeah. yeah. Excellent. Flew over that. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, I'm glad to see he's doing so well, and I hope he passes his course, I think, in a week or something, very soon indeed. Later on, we'll be seeing how police dogs help to catch criminals. See you later. Does your needs change? Can you change your mobile price plan whenever you like? You can with Perfect Fit from Vodafone. Constipation. Sometimes I want a predictable solution, so I take Senecot for gentle relief when I wake. Senecot. Natural relief for a brighter tomorrow. You can see a lot of Australia this summer for a lot less. Qantas return flights start at just £699, including three internal flights. Call 0845 850 1111 or see your travel agent. Had enough of cross network charges? With inclusive minutes on Vodafone's Anytime plans, you can call anyone on any UK network at no extra cost. So you can find your perfect fit. You, sir, have got yourself a nodding, talking, financially rewarding living dog. You what? A caring, sharing, vehicular, protecting living dog? That's right. And to clarify, all you've got to do is ring me. I'll log on to you. And I'm your lifelong pal. So everyone can have a nodding, talking, gratifying living dog. Living dog. See how much you could save on your car insurance. Talk to Churchill now on 0800 200 300. <laughs> When my skin's feeling good, I feel that I'm looking good, and that makes me feel great. Original Astral Moisturizer. How every woman should feel. To protect my skin, I found the Guardian Angel. New solar expertise by L'Oreal. An innovation, the first skin caring sun protection with Activa Cell. It improves the quality of your skin. Its advanced protection multiplies skin defense levels. L'Oreal Solar Expertise, its formula with Activa Cell improves skin quality. Protected, my skin is beautiful. New Solar Expertise by L'Oreal. You're worth it. When it's a bright sunny day, most of us prefer to be in the shade. Nationwide offer a huge range of sun awnings and a variety of colours, widths and sizes. The awnings come with an automatic controller that's so easy to use that even drummer can do it. And if you'd like details of these beautiful awnings, ring 0800 600 777 today for a free brochure. Come on, drummer. You've made your point.
For an unsecured personal loan of up to £25,000, call Lombard Direct on 0800 215000 or apply online at lombarddirect.com. Want help finding a mobile plan that really suits you? Pop into Vodafone and ask about perfect fit price plans. Inspector Lindsay Thompson has arrived to look into a report about a number of semi-wild cats. Um, I've been called to this address um, following a call from someone concerned that there's an elderly gentleman that lives here that's feeding feral cats and they were concerned with the condition of the cats so I'm going to go and have a look at them and see how they are. So, well there's two cats here that um, I've obviously just been fed by the owner because there's fresh meat down. Um, they both look okay on general inspection, you know, um, they both look quite healthy. I take it that they're not used to being handled. If there's anything major wrong with them, I should be able to see that. But they're not going to let me. <laughs> there's another one over here. It looks like it may have a slight cut on its side. But it's in the bushes, so I don't know if I'm going to get close enough to that one either to have a good look at it. The gentleman obviously looks after them. They get well fed. Um, but with regards to fleeing and um, worming them and neutering, I doubt if any of that's going on. So really, from our side, what would probably be the best course of action would be to help him in that and maybe look at setting up traps to get them neutered. Obviously, it's going to get out of hand if not. They're going to be breeding. Um, there's going to be new kittens every, every summer. Um, and it's just going to get, you know, out of control. Dealing with populations of feral cats tends to be one of those long-term projects. Having identified this group, Lindsay will be back another day to make a start on sorting them out. But now, on the other side of Leeds, Collection Officer Kira Driscoll has arrived at Buttershaw High School to deal with a more immediate problem. Hiya. How about the bats? Have you got them in here? Yeah, I'll bring them Can you bring in? Yeah, brilliant. Hiya. Hi. Right. So you found these two bats in the school? Yeah, we've, yeah. Um, we've actually got workmen in right? Um, and they've disturbed them and destroyed okay. the nest without knowing. So we're not sure whether they're adults or babies? No. 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 OK. The workmen found four bats in the nest, but two flew off. The question is, why didn't these two? Perhaps they're babies, too That's young nice. to fly. Yeah, they're native pipistrels. Um, they look pretty healthy, they look like adults actually. They've got fully furred, they've got all their wings, pretty active as well. Now to check the second bat. Right, it looks pretty healthy, lively. There's no obvious damage to him or anything. I'll just pop him in with his friend. The bats seem fine, so perhaps they were just too frightened to move. Right, now we've got them both in the box. They're pretty healthy, pretty lively, and they, they are full adult pipistrels, so it's better off in the same area that they came from just to release them out. Oh. Hopefully they should fly off and find themselves somewhere to roost. Good. And they'll be okay. As it's daylight, Kira is going to put the bats in a tree behind the school. That way they'll have the option to take shelter until dusk. But the first one just wants to be off. Always oh, The second bat thinks the same way. It's gone off. He's obviously not happy with staying in the tree flown off. I'm happy that they've both flown off because obviously they're not injured or anything so hopefully they'll fly, find a nice place to roost uh, for the evening and then they'll be able to do the normal flying at night and find some food, hopefully, fingers crossed. So it's a nice release, nice to know they both flew off, so best thing we could have got really. Today we've been looking at police dog training and now we've got something really quite lively to show you, haven't we Jim? What are we going to do? We're going to see an exercise called a chasing attack. It's where 
the villain, the burglar, the car thief, whatever, is challenged by the officer to stand still. If he doesn't, the dog's released to detain him. Murphy's waiting over there. OK, go ahead. Right, are you ready, Paul? Challenge. Stay. Stay. Please, the dog! Off the lead. Stand still, stand it off. Ready to you go. Are oh, so he's... The dog, stand he's in full still, control. He's not going till Paul chance. says. Hold him! Oh, crikey, he's fast. Oh! And there's some force behind that, isn't there? Oh, he means it. He means it. Yeah. But he's in control at all times, the officer. You saw him off the lead. Yes. He only goes when the handler tells him to go. Stand and now, still. presumably, he gets off when Paul tells him to. Heel! Well, Heel! Heel! Oh, I think he was quite enjoying that, wasn't Down. he? Oh, he enjoys Down. This. Stay. No, OK, so the, the burglar's face. standing still. Yeah. Stay. Stay. The, wow, the dog really will keep impressive. surveillance on him all the time. Yes. If the burglar, the thief, makes a move on the officer here... Yes, Stay. or makes a second attempt yeah. to do, get away. The dog will take over. Right. OK, now you've got a gun in your hand. Can you show us what's... We're going to see with that, please. Yeah, what, what happens with the gun is the dog has to detain a man that's shooting at him. At him, OK. OK, Heel. can we see the Heel. one with the gun? Yay! No problem. Thank you. Oh, boy! Hey, Gary. <coughs> Gary. See him again, Paul. So, potentially slightly more serious, this. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, people do shoot at police officers and dogs. And this exercise here okay. is when a gunshot goes off, the dog will challenge him. Hey, you! Go on, send your dog! Go on, what are you going to do? Go on! Please, yeah, well, yeah, the the dog's yeah. Yeah. Get hold of him! Go on! Oh. Go on. Cool, he's really got him there, hasn't he? What do you think of that? Well, I wouldn't shoot at him. Right, OK. Put that gun well, listen, down. I'll tell you what, I don't think... Move away! I don't think I'd be shooting at him either. What we've seen today has been so impressive with these police dogs. You wouldn't want to mess with them, would you? Yesterday at the Halifax Animal Centre, we met Jenna, the 11-year-old Jack Russell Terrier. She came in due to her owner's poor health and elderly Jenna was feeling very lost in kennels. So she was taken on by volunteer fosterer Marie Blackburn until a permanent new home could be found. Now, a week later, Jenna may be in luck. If we have a lady that was coming, hopefully this afternoon, who seems to really want to replace the one she's lost. And I'm just hoping that they take to each other and that Jenna gets a really nice home to spend the rest of her days. For Elsie Tyson, a new dog might bring some comfort after a period of bereavement. Well, I lost my husband six months ago and my little Jack Russell four weeks after, at 15 years old. And after a short while, I decided it was time to go for another dog. Ah, oh, hello. Now then, what did Mrs. they call Jenna? you? <laughs> hey, what did they call you? <gasps> well, Jenna's well, everybody's you friend. little love. There you are. Now then, right. let me have a look at you. Ooh, oh, that's <laughs> lovely. They tell me you are an excellent little girl. The introductions have gone well so far, but Elsie wants to know there more. We are. Thank you. Well, how have you found us in Shavadar? Is there any sign of uh, wear and tear there? Or, no, uh, I've not, 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 not limping noticed. about or no. anything of that nature? No, nothing at all that I can No bother with her see. eyes? No, she just wants a lovely home to spend the rest of her days. I think, from what you've said, I'm going to adopt take her. Take her on. Uh, oh, take I'm her so on. Pleased. And uh, You won't be sorry. I think, um, between us, we'll have some nice walks and get a little bit older together. Yes, that's so. marvellous. A few days later, Marie is packing Jenna's things. 
I shall miss her an awful lot, but on the other hand, I know she's going to a good home. So that's the main thing, that's what it's all about. At well, last. Come on. Come on. Thank you. Come on. Come on then. It's Jenna's first sight of her new home and she can't wait to explore. How's she been doing? She's been fine. Has she? she really yeah. has. Just look at her having a good look round. Yes. Yes. <laughs> That's a Jack Russell. Every little place there is. I've been uh, thinking while I've been sat this afternoon back to my own dog and Big tears. Yeah. I know. Come on. Come on, Jenna. But now Elsie has Jenna and companionship once more. Let's say this since I decided to have her, a cloud's passed over. I've been a different person uh, because it's what I needed to do. I've waited four months for another. It's, it's just some company again. After a long time. Come on, don't be frightened. Come on. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Just look. Finding a new home for an older animal is a problem they're all too familiar with at the Snetterton branch of the International League for the Protection of Horses in Norfolk. Groom Vicky Cooper has got rather fond of a horse called September Willow, but still she's hoping that someone will soon phone in to offer her a new home. Really sweet. She's 18 now, so she's getting on a bit. But apart from that, she's really lively and you wouldn't know that she's old at all and she's a great companion for the other horses and basically to handle she's the sweetest mare that we've got here I think and she's my favourite as well. September Willow really has got to be a companion because she's getting old now and to ride she is quite, can be quite naughty and she's really good as a companion. She's really quiet and just tells, tells them what's what. September Willow loves um, her head being scratched and she likes being groomed as well. Um, she basically likes just having attention really and obviously she likes mints and apples and treats and stuff that we give her. She'd be best going with teenagers or older children. I don't think it'd be wise to have her with younger children because she can be a bit grumpy but apart from that she's good as gold. Willow I think will offer someone a lot of love and attention. If they give it to her she'll offer it them back and it'd just be nice for her to just deliver last days out in the field having fun with her friends. If you think that you've got a good place for September Willow, then give us a call now on 0900 174474. Remember, if you're under 18, get a parent or guardian to call for you. Leave your name and number on the answer phone and someone will get back to you. Priority will be given to people in Norfolk and the surrounding counties. From a fairly big horse to a real-life miniature, one called Daniela Westbrook, honestly. She's just 18 inches high and she's on Richard and Judy's show live at 5. Now, coming up next here on 4 Daytime, we're playing 15 to 1. My dentures really annoy me. They move about, irritating my gums. And my old adhesive doesn't seem to work anymore. Try Seabond. Not a paste, but a soft cushion with two strong adhesives for a perfect fit. Protects gums from irritation and cleans up easily. It's like having my own teeth back again. Seabond. Gum tight hold. Oi, turtle! Are you eating a sweet? Yes, I am. Don't! I apologise. Can I have one? Give the dog a phone now and see how much you could save on car insurance. I'm not getting in that! I can't afford a new car. Hiya. Hi, Jen. Why don't you try Direct Line? They do my car cover. They do loans, too. That's how I got my new kitchen. A Direct Line loan is an easy way to borrow up to £25,000 at really competitive rates, based on your circumstances and loan amount. 
Just call 0800 051 5000 or apply online. That's 0800 051 5000 for a low-cost loan for almost anything. Or apply online. <laughs> 